The Giants are reportedly showing interest in Mitch Hanniger, an outfielder from Mountain View, and also, how about this, longtime Dodgers closer Kenley Jansen. So we'll get into that next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked on Giants, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thanks for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And coming up on today's show, three topics I want to get into. Giants reportedly interested in Mitch Hanniger. Uh, Giants also reportedly showing interest in Kenley Jansen. And finally, there's some news about Cody Bellinger that makes me feel a certain way about the odds of him coming to the Giants. So a couple of Dodgers here that we're going to discuss And the possibility of them joining the Giants. But first is Mitch Hanniger. And where I'm getting this from is Ken Rosenthal in The Athletic came out with his kind of uh, notes article on Sunday night. And what he says is that uh, the Rangers are showing interest in free agent outfielder Mitch Hanniger, who is also drawing attention from the Giants as well as other clubs. And so it's not all that surprising. He and Aaron Judge are the two uh, local players of note in this free agent class and clearly the Giants have a uh, thing for signing local players or at least having interest and it doesn't hurt that Mitch Hanniger is a quality player albeit one with kind of a checkered injury history and also uncertainty around how good he is defensively to me at least like when I look at the numbers he's been good he's been not so good so maybe he's somewhere in the middle I don't know but Uh, The bat plays for sure. He's got a career uh, 261 average, 335 on base, and 476 slugging. Playing in a uh, not-so-hitter-friendly environment in Seattle for the vast majority of his, his career. He started with the Diamondbacks and then was traded to Seattle in the deal that actually sent Cattell Marte from Seattle to Arizona. And... All Hanniger has done in Seattle is hit, like I said, a 122 weighted runs created plus, 112 Major League homers in just 564 games. So the power is kind of the calling card offensively. Career 215 ISO, isolated power, slugging minus batting average, is very healthy. But what's not been very healthy is Hanniger himself. And this year, for example, he only played in 57 games. He had a high ankle sprain that kept him out of You know, he missed a lot of time in 2022. In 2021, he was fully healthy. He had 691 plate appearances and he had 39 home runs. And then he missed all of 2020, though. I think he was still dealing with an injury from a, get this, ruptured testicle that he sustained on a foul ball that he felt it hit the ground and bounced up and got him. And so he missed a lot of time in 2019 and 2020 with those injuries. He also had COVID, I think, this year and had to go on the COVID IL. So, I mean, some of these injuries are fluky, some maybe not so fluky, but Hanniger, he's for sure like an interesting player. The one thing is, though, I don't know that I can see a scenario in which it would make sense to have both Aaron Judge and Mitch Hanniger. And some of you are thinking they're not getting Aaron Judge. I know a lot of people like think that way, but they're for sure, I think, in on Aaron Judge. They're not just like, well... Uh, let's just not even be interested. I think they're definitely interested. Their interest is serious. And, you know, beat reporters, Andy Baggerly, Alex Pavlovich, and others have essentially said that they know for a fact that the Giants are going to make a serious pursuit at this guy and that if he wants to play for the Giants, he he will accept and he will receive an acceptable offer to do so. So it really, to me, is going to come down to where does Aaron Judge want to be. And I think that Hanniger makes the most sense on the Giants as a backup plan. And it's not that, it's just that there aren't a lot of impact outfielders. And so if you miss out on Judge, Hanniger is one of the next best guys in the outfield. And so I do think like adding an everyday player 
into a corner outfield spot. Honestly, I could see them adding two outfielders, one like true center fielder, and I don't think Hanniger is that. I don't really think Judge is that either. So one of these guys goes to a corner if you were to sign one. And then in your other corner, I think you put Yastrzemski and Slater, that platoon. And then in center, I would like to just see a true center fielder. You know, we'll talk about Cody Bellinger a little bit later on, but he would qualify. Uh, Also, there's Brandon Nimmo. He would be the top free agent uh, possibility. And then there's Kevin Kiermeyer, who I like quite a bit, but also has real injury concern. And the Giants have made it pretty clear that they want to sign, bring in players who are not injury concerns. And so that's why Hanniger and even Kiermeyer, you start to question a little bit, does it make the most sense? And then there's trade possibilities in the outfield as well. And in center, there's uh, Alec Thomas, who we talked about, I think it was on Friday. And Dalton Varsho, if he was possibly available, that would be a great player for the Giants to target. So there are possibilities. But anyway, I just think Hanniger is probably like outfield, part of outfield plan B could be plan C, but just not plan A in the corner outfield. But if Aaron Judge were to leave New York, I think that Hanniger plus a true center fielder like, say, Kevin Kiermeyer, plus I think at that point, if you've missed out on Judge, they really do need to pivot to one of these free agent shortstops, one of the top four, and to me, even one of the top two in Trey Turner, Carlos Correa. And for me, it it comes down to Correa. I've made the determination. He's my favorite guy. He might honestly make even more sense on the San Francisco Giants than Aaron Judge does. And so, yeah, that's the that's the report. And again, like you're 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 not putting all your eggs in one basket. So the fact that the Giants are interested in Hanniger doesn't mean they're not interested in Judge. It means you got to have a backup plan if Judge makes that determination to go to New York, which has always been probably the more likely. I mean, not even probably. It's more likely, I think, that he goes back to New York than coming to the Giants. But that doesn't mean it's not possible he comes to the Giants. It's just you, and, and what are you going to do if he leaves? you got to have a backup plan. So coming up in just a minute, the Giants are also interested reportedly in Kenley Jansen, the, the former Dodgers longtime closer. So we'll discuss that possibility for him coming to the Giants in just a minute. But before we do, today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at Bet Online. And also, how about the MLB offseason? We've focused a lot on Aaron Judge and the odds over at Bet Online that have him uh, have the Giants as the favorites to land Aaron Judge if he leaves New York. But there's a bunch of other free agents that they've looked at as well including Carlos Correa, including these pitchers, Jacob deGrom, Carlos Rodon. And it's really interesting to see where the Giants land. And I feel like on our show, we get somewhat inside information. Maybe it's not technically inside information, but, you know, educated guesses about a lot of these guys. And so it's always a great opportunity. So if you listen to the show and you can then go to bet online and see what opportunities are out there, always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, as promised, we are going to discuss the rumor report, actually, that Kenley Jansen, that the Giants are interested in Kenley Jansen, I should say. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with the local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today is available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So yes, we had reports, a couple of reporters. I think the other was John Heyman, but I believe the first one was uh, John Morosi who says, source, SF Giants showing interest in free agent Kenley Jansen. Gabe Kapler and Farhan Zaidi know Jansen from their time with the Dodgers. And my reaction to this was that it made a lot of sense because the Giants clearly have a need in the bullpen. And Kenley Jansen, while on the older side at this point in time, he is 35 years old, turned 35 in September, He is still good, and he actually led the National League in saves in 2022 for a 101-win team. He had a 3.38 ERA, 
Strikeout rate was about 33%, which is very healthy and very good. Walk rate had been trending in the wrong direction. And maybe part of the reason he left LA was because there was an increase in, in walks and they decided to move on. But he got it back under control in 2022 and it was very much fine. And so, look, Jansen is just a really good relief pitcher. He's got a career 2.46 ERA. I saw a lot of reaction on Twitter that was negative about this. And I kind of don't understand it. The only way, the only viewpoint that I see that can be negative is if you just hate the Dodgers that much. And I respect that. <laughs> I really do. But like Jack Peterson, you know, like you can sign a former Dodger. It's not his fault that he was uh, drafted and developed by the Dodgers. Kenley Jansen is kind of known as just being a really good down to earth guy. And I think he would be a great part of any team. Like any good Giants team can certainly have room for Kenley Jansen. The question may be about, would he be a closer? Would he be a setup guy? Whatever. That's a relevant question. A, excuse me, that's a relevant question, not an irrelevant question. Uh, because, yes, you've got Camilo Doval, and would Jansen want to sign with a team and not be the closer? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't care about that. Maybe he just, at this point in his career, I don't know what he wants. And so all we know is that John Morosi said that the Giants are showing interest in him. But it it makes a lot of sense. Like We haven't spent a lot of time talking about free agent relief pitchers on the show, and that's because, as I have said numerous times, like, Relief pitchers are just so volatile that it's hard for me to say, yes, go out and get this guy because he could be bad this year or somebody who's kind of under the radar could be really good. But Kenley Jansen is simply one of the best relievers of all time. And uh, yeah, a lot of the negative reactions I saw seemed to be from people who thought that he was like bad, either that he was bad all the time or that he's washed up now. Neither of those things are true. He was never bad. Like... He's he's one of the best relief pitchers of all time. If you set the minimum to like 500 career innings and you look at ERA for relief pitchers, he's in the top five of all time at 2.46. He's just and he's still moving right along at, at this age in, in his career. And so it's pretty impressive. And there's just no doubt he would help the Giants bullpen. And because of his age, he wouldn't require a three, four, five year commitment like we've already seen some of the better relief pitchers on the market. Uh, there's been very little activity on the free agent market, just by the way. There has been uh, a couple of signings that were like pure free agent deals. And otherwise, it's been stuff spurred by the qualifying offer. Like every one of these players, Anthony Rizzo, Tyler Anderson, Martin Perez, Jock Peterson, uh, have been spurred by the qualifying offer. And then there's two other deals or three that have been for relievers in Robert Suarez, Nick Martinez, and Rafael Montero, all of those players returning to their original teams. But the the market has been robust for these players. Like Rafael uh, Montero got a three-year, $34.5 million deal as a reliever, and Robert Suarez of the Padres got five years, $46 million. These are hefty deals. And for Jansen, you might be able to get them on a one- or two-year deal, uh, maybe cost a lot per year, but it's short term. And the Giants have been pretty obvious that they like to sign impact players, but on shorter term deals, if possible. And so Jansen would certainly fit that mold. And the Giants have a lot of work to do in their bullpen. They, you know, they've got some turnover that has taken place, like Scott Alexander is back. By the way, he and Mike Yastrzemski avoided arbitration on Friday. And they've got a bunch of other arbitration eligible players who did not yet avoid arbitration, but you know, they could go to arbitration, but anyway, a lot of bullpen turnover already, but also they, they certainly could use, if they're really trying to compete and win in 2023, having a guy like Jansen certainly wouldn't hurt. And so I would be a fan of that signing, not going to lie. So coming up in just a minute, another former Dodger, we're going to discuss the Cody Bellinger situation. He was indeed non-tendered by the Los Angeles Dodgers on Friday. They made efforts to trade him. Nobody bit on those attempts, and they simply released him into free agency. So what did Scott Boris, his agent, have to say about what type of deal Bellinger is looking for, and does it make the Giants more likely or less likely than we were thinking 
before he was non-tendered or at the time he was non-tendered. We'll get to it in just a second. But first, if you've thought about securing your home with home security, but have been putting it off, you're going to want to listen to this. Right now, Locked on Giants listeners can, can get the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for half off, 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year. And I know that you're not going to want to miss it. I use it and I love it. One of my favorite things is just the simplicity and usability of the app and being able to navigate through it and check in on all my crystal clear HD cameras at any time of day just feels like you're blanketed in protection. And that really is invaluable to me. And in an emergency 24 seven professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. This that's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, as promised, Cody Bellinger news. And this is, again, coming from this report, uh, note report, whatever you want to call it, from Ken Rosenthal last night, dropping in The Athletic. Unfortunately, the only Giants news he had to offer there was about Mitch Hanniger, which is significant, but, you know, it's not Aaron Judge rumors. It's not Rodon or Correa rumors, but we'll take what we can get at this point. But Cody Bellinger is a big story in the sport as the 27-year-old former MVP was non-tendered by the Dodgers following two miserable seasons. Like, I talked about this on the last episode. Miserable seasons. We're not talking average seasons. We're talking terrible, at least at the plate. And the, the argument is that he makes up for it in the field and on the bases. And that's true to an extent. But I have said this. You just have to be all right if you really want the Giants to sign Bellinger with the possibility that he's literally the worst hitter in baseball. Literally the worst. That is a that is what he has been over the last two years. If you set the minimum to 900 plate appearances and look at, I think even just by something simple like OPS, but even like weighted runs created plus, a little bit more sophisticated, dead last by a lot, by a lot. If you set the minimum a little lower, there are other players who've been worse, but basically he plays a lot and he's been stinking up the joint for two years. But it's Crazy because he was the MVP of the National League at, what, age 24 just a few years ago. And so his free agency is fascinating, and there's been a lot of speculation that he could be a fit for the Giants. I have said numerous times, not only are am I worried about the offense not being, not just not being good, but being, I'm worried about the offense being terrible, but also I don't think the Giants make sense because... He, what he would be looking for in a new deal is to rebuild value offensively. And why would you, as a left-handed hitter, want to come to Oracle Park of all places? Like, this guy will have interest from pretty much every team in the league. And so if you're Cody Bellinger, like, we just have to think about this objectively and not irrationally from a fan's perspective. If you're Cody Bellinger and you have, like, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars on the line, like, if you can have a season like you had when you were the MVP might take a couple of years of that before he would be able to do this, but he could be in line for over a hundred million dollars, maybe more. But if he struggles, then he's getting nothing. And so, I mean, he would fizzle out and start not being on teams radars. Like if he continues to be this bad offensively. And so anyway, objectively speaking, why of all places would you want to come to the giants? I thought their only real, opportunity to sign a guy like Bellinger would be if they could give him a three or four year deal with like a very modest average annual value like eight to nine to ten million dollars I wouldn't go ten over four years but over three years something like that if you guarantee him that money so he gets his guarantee but that's not what he wants and this is what Ken Rosenthal in the Athletics said Uh, he talked to Scott Boris on Sunday and said, quote, Boris said, quote, I've already been offered multi years and that uh, most likely because of his age, we don't want a multi year. That's what he said. End quote. 
And so, yes, he's 27 years old. So he's not looking to just say, okay, yeah, take me till I'm 30 and then we'll see what happens. He can go year to year right now. He can sign a one-year deal in his age 27 season and try to rebound. And if he doesn't, he could de- get take another one-year deal and try to rebound again. Uh, someone on Twitter mentioned that uh, a one-year deal plus a player option could make a lot of sense for Bellinger, and I agree. So you're so he would be guaranteed. It's kind of like the Carlos Rodon deal, but probably less expensive. I think that the number that was thrown out on Twitter is actually very accurate and may end up being what he gets, which was essentially a two-year, thirty million dollar guarantee, but an opt-out after year one. And I could very well see that happening. But if you're Bellinger, why not go play for the Colorado Rockies? Why not go play for, I don't know, the Baltimore Orioles or the Philadelphia Phillies or the Toronto Blue Jays? Just anywhere where it's a better place to hit makes so much more sense than the Giants. I guess if you offer him the most guaranteed money, say you go like two years, 40 million or something guaranteed, but with an opt out after year one, you might be able to perhaps convince him, maybe. But I just think it. Given these comments by Boris, it seems quite unlikely that he would choose the Giants of all teams. I think thinking that he would come to the Giants is thinking like with blinders on from a fan's perspective as opposed to rationally about what's best for the player. And ultimately, the decision gets made based on what's best for the player. So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out Locked On Sports Today, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's like the sports page of old, but in podcast form, kind of modernized with the local experts on every team on the biggest stories. So it's fantastic. Check it out on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. Helps me out a lot, so thanks in advance. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Hopefully some juicy Giants rumors or news even to report on. So thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.